Okay, our next problem is um, a problem about uniform circular motion. Let's first define the problem. In this problem, we have a small mass which is attached to the top of the, well, to the ceiling and to the floor where the distance is d at that, from this point to that point, which is parallel. The mass, uh, the mass of the object is m given and uh, the length here is same as the length there, although it does not look so. Let's assume that they are the same. And we are rotating this mass uh, in this direction. Okay? So there is rotation in that direction about this point. And the rotational, the angular velocity is given by omega. And the question here is the length is L, length is L. Uh, let's define this angle to be theta. Okay. The question is what should be the minimum angular speed such that uh, the object is going, to have, is going to have that kind of motion, where there's going to be tension there and this is going to be straight as well. And first of all, uh, what happens if the velocity is small and what happens if the velocity is large? We have to discuss that. And according to uh, that discussion, we are going to predict some uh, values for the tension in this rope and in that rope. Uh, when the velocity is small, we, let's call it low speed. What's going to happen is this. Almost zero velocity, so it's going to hang down. In that case, here is the uh, rope, which is going to be not straight. When the velocity is high, what's going to happen is is going to make that kind of motion. However, the tension here and there is going to be great if, it, if the velocity is very large because of the centripetal force. So just at the critical point, what's going, well, what is the tension there? There's going to be some tension there for sure, and the tension at that point is going to be same as the weight of the object, which is going to be mg. But tension in this rope, we cannot talk about tension, uh, uh, meaningful tension. So tension here is zero, but tension there is going to be greater than zero for sure. At, just at the critical point, this is, all, this is going to be a straight, however, tension will still be zero. Right, but right after we pass the critical point, point tension will increase uh, slowly. It's going to have some small tension. So let's demonstrate what happens. Uh, okay. Here is the setup. As we have seen on the board, we have two strings there and there, and the lengths are exactly the same. And here is our object with mass m. Uh, when the speed is uh, small, it is, well, here there's some tension, which is mg. However, there's no tension on the lower part of the rope. Okay? When we give a high speed, like that, okay, there's certainly tension here and there, which are, which are non-zero. Let's slow it down. This time we are going to start with a higher velocity, such that the initial angular speed is going to be greater than the critical uh, speed. Uh, as the velocity of the angular velocity of the object slows down, um, the uh, tension on the lower string is going to be zero, and it's going to be deformed. So I'm going to give the initial velocity right now. Watch the uh, lower part of the string. Currently it is straight. As it uh, slows down, it's going to be something like that. Not like that, but like that. Okay. It just started, as you can see, it is deformed, which means that it is, the tension is not uh, greater, it, it is not greater than zero anymore, it's uh, zero. And we are going to find the required angular speed um, on the board. Okay, 
Now let's analyze the problem. In order to uh, solve this problem, first of all, we need to uh, draw the free body diagram. Um, this is the object, and the forces acting on this object are, is, first of all, the weight, which is mg. Then we have tension in the upper part of the string, which is going to be t, an unknown. And the tension on the lower string is zero, as we have seen. So I'm not going to draw it uh, at all. And there is acceleration. Since this is a circular motion, let me uh, draw the uh, setup from the top view. Here is the top view. The object is making a circular motion, a uniform motion. Here is the velocity. And this is the angular velocity. Since it's making a circular motion, there is definitely acceleration towards the center of the circle. Then uh, it is drawn in that direction. Anything else? If this is theta, then that is theta, and the mass of the object is m. After this point, we don't need this uh, drawing. Let's write down the equations of motion. for the x direction and for the y direction. When we talk about x and y direction, we have to define them. Here is my x direction, because the acceleration is in that direction. Here is my y direction. And the forces on the x direction, well, there's only one component there, which is the component of this tension. In that case, that is going to be t sine theta. And the component in the y direction of the tension is t cosine theta. So the only force in the x direction is t sine theta is equal to m times the acceleration. Acceleration is a, the magnitude of the acceleration is a. And acceleration for a circular motion is a equal to omega square times r, or a is equal to v square divided by r. Okay, we are going to prefer this notation. Then t sine theta will be equal to m omega square r. This is our first equation. Then equation mo of motion in the y direction is uh, going to be uh, written using this force and that force. Since this is the positive direction, t cosine theta in the positive direction. And the, in the negative direction, we have the weight of the object is equal to mass times the acceleration in the y direction, which is the acceleration in the y direction is 0, which is equal to 0. Then t cosine theta will be equal to mg. Here is our first equation. Here is our second equation. And we need a relation for the omega, the angular speed. And we do not know the magnitude of t here. So let's get rid of that. In order to get rid of this, as usual, we can um, take the ratio of these two equations. Equation number one divided by equation number two, which is going to give me t sine theta divided by t cosine theta uh, equal to what we have here, m omega square r divided by mg. Right? OK. So t cancels. That was the purpose. And m cancels as well, which means that the answer is going to be independent of m, which is nice. Tangent theta will be equal to omega square r divided by g. We need a little bit of trigonometry in order to find that. Let's uh, draw a triangle here, theta. Let's draw the same triangle there, just to clarify. This is d divided by 2. And that is r, okay, seen from top. This is r, and this is l. Theta is there. Then tangent theta will be equal to r divided by d divided by 2. We can use that relation, which is nice because we have under r there. So let's solve for the omega, um, which is r divided by d divided by 2 is equal to omega square r divided by g 
then omega, which is the critical uh, angular speed, as we have seen, let's mark it as this, critical, is going to be equal to, if we solve it for the omega, um, square root of 2g divided by d. Okay. Then omega in, or, omega, in order to have such a situation here, where there's tension there, and there's barely tension there, or higher tension there, uh, then when there's barely tension, it's equal uh, sign. When it is great, when, when there's non-zero tension, it's going to be greater sign. It's going to be 2g divided by d. So that's the answer. Omega must be greater than that value in order to have such a situation, or equal. Is the dimension correct? Dimension of omega is equal to square root of the dimension of g, which is length divided by time square, divided by dimension of distance, which is l. l cancels out, so the answer is 1 over time, which is correct. As we expect, uh, the unit, uh, the standard unit uh, for the omega would be radian per second, which is radian is unitless, so it is uh, 1 divided by time. Does it make sense? Let's uh, consider another, uh, well, let's do the same experiment in space where g is 0. Then the critical uh, speed would be equal to just 0, which means that in space, when we do such an experiment, it is not rotating and it will, st uh, it will stay the, at the same position and there's going to, this is going to be straight and that's going to be straight forever. If we repeat the experiment in another plant where g is large, which means that the weight is going to pull that down such that this is going to be, the theta is going to be smaller and smaller. In order to correct that, we have to rotate it faster in order to increase the centripetal force, which is, again, it, it makes sense. Okay, so that's the uh, answer.